I thought it, you know, I can't say an easy fight, but a more definitive from around the eighth round on. I thought I thought once Chad found his legs and found his positioning, I thought it was pretty good. Talk about uh, the uh, the discussions in the corner, the early rounds after the cut, the headbutt, and keep it, having Chad keep his composure. Well, I'm I'm big on that. I'm big on um, you know composure and demeanor. I've always been that's always been my thing. And uh, so after the cut. And he came back to the corner and he said something like, oh, man, he cut me. And I said, listen, I know it's easier said than done, but you're looking beautiful. Like, if anything, around the time he got cut is when he started really flowing. I said, I said forget the cut. You gotta, that's part of boxing. And um, and he listened. And, and, and again, I give myself a certain amount of credit for telling him some good things. But I've told a lot of fighters good things that they didn't really do. Um, so he gets all the credit. I mean, he, he did what he had to do, and he, and he once he got into his groove, I thought he was great. Most had him winning the fight decisively, right. but when the scorecards were red, talk about what went through your mind as that first score was red. I thought robbery, and I thought, um, I'll tell, tell you something. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but, you know, it is what it is. Somebody in the boxing world, and I can't say who it is, somebody influential in the boxing world two days ago, after they announced they the judges, they told me they didn't like that, that guy being appointed as a judge, that he was, in their opinion, very questionable. As soon as they read his scorecard, my mind went right to this guy. And I said, I can't believe this guy was dead on. He was dead on. He called this two days ago. Um, so that was uh, that was a little um, not good. Now, Chad's got a bright career ahead of him, presumably. How do you prevent, and I mean, it'll be everyone in his circle, but how do you personally prevent Bernard Hopkins being his mountaintop? Because it was, you know, for years he chased him, then the fallout in October, now this. He's got a lot more he can accomplish here. How, do, how does Bernard not be the, you know, the top of the mountain? You know, it's, it's, there's always another mountain. I mean, there's some there's some, there's some, there's some monsters out there. You know, I mean, you got guys that want to say Mute and Andre Ward and Frotch and all these guys. I mean, and, and the light heavyweights. I mean, uh, until last night, I thought Salak was going to be the guy. Next year, I thought, I thought, wow, we're going to have our hands full. But Pascal is still out there. And, uh, you know, obviously he, he made for trouble last time for Chad. Um, I think there was reasons for that, and I think it won't be a problem, as much of a problem this time. But, um, you know, you can't, you can't, uh, you know, think that this is your pinnacle and, and you're done. Bernard, look at Bernard beat Trinidad 11 years ago. He could have retired that day and been like, look what I just did. How do you go out on a higher note than that? Look, here he is 11 years later. He's, until tonight, he was the champion of the world. The hot button name, as you mentioned, has been Ward this week, especially kind of, I guess, opportune timing for him to come out and say that, uh, you know, that's the fight that he's really looking to do. How, what do you think of that matchup? Um, you know, that's a, a high quality, you know, Andre Ward is a tremendous fighter, and he's he adjusts really well in the ring. Um, you know, he, he's a handful. He's a big handful, but uh, we're a handful, too. So, that's, and that's what boxing's about. That's that's what people want to see. They want to see two handfuls going at it. Chad alluded to uh, dropping down to 68. What, I mean, wouldn't your preference be, I'm sure, Gary Shaw might have been thinking the same thing. What about him coming up? Yeah, you guys? yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, Chad, you know, it's in the, the heat of the moment, and he feels like, oh, I could do that, you know, but, and he could. I mean, he, he comes into camp very light, but, um, you know, traditionally, the guys come up and wait, you know, and I would think Andrew Ward would want to conquer a new weight class, attempt to, rather than stay where he's at. So, um, you know, if I was to guess, I'd say 175 would be where I would be at. He's going to be tied up for the moment with um, Carl Frotch, but another interesting name obviously has to be Butte because not only the numbers it will do, even if he brought it back up there again, oh, where yeah, yeah, Pascal yeah. they sold, you know, all those tickets. You know, talk about that matchup. What are your What are your thoughts on the uh, matchup with him? You know, Butte is a, a, a monster. He's uh, his that that uppercut he has to the body and the head. I mean, devastating. And um, you know, he's on a high. I mean, that guy's on a on a real high. And that that it's important. People need to realize it's not just who you fight; it's it's when you fight them. At the at what point in their career you fight them. And uh, if we were to fight Butte, we'd be fighting him at his peak, at his pinnacle. So um, it'd make for a great fight. But I think the one thing about these guys is they're not as slippery as Hopkins and Chad. Uh, you know, as you saw with Tarver and Johnson. I mean, and everybody else basically. When he lets his hands go against the average guy, um, and even the elite guys. I mean, he lands at a high rate. Uh, Hopkins is slick as, as oil. Um, you know, so 
it's uh, I don't know what the connect percentage was. It might not have been high. It might have been a little higher than other people against Hopkins. Great. Well, thank you very much. We uh, appreciate all the insight and uh, look forward to seeing you guys back, uh, I guess, in a few months or so. Thank you. Appreciate it.